We are McGraw-Hill. Um, my name is Carrie Guy, and I'm your local account representative based right here in Arizona. With me today, um, my district manager for the Mountain West, Colleen Miller, uh, also Darlene Messer, one of our regional directors for our digital acceleration group, and Mr. Kevin Eddington is here. He is one of our ELA content curriculum specialists, and he'll be walking you through Study Sync from McGraw Hill. We'll hold time at the end for dedicated Q&A, but feel free to ask questions throughout. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat if there's something um, that you'd like to ask there. But for now, I will go ahead and turn it over to Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Carrie, and good evening, Tucson. It's truly an honor to stand before you this evening. Now, as I was getting prepared for today's conversation, and I really indeed wanted to be a conversation, I'm reminded of one of my favorite authors of all time, and that's James Baldwin. And James Baldwin often started his public speaking engagements by saying, I'm just trying to get something started. Now, as a former English teacher, I too was trying to get something started. And what I was trying to get started was that I wanted to see that my students got to the next level. Now that next level certainly included students becoming better readers and writers, certainly the given in our ELA classrooms. But most importantly, I wanna see that my students became better thinkers, ultimately to become better citizens as they left my classroom and hopefully had an impact on the world around us. Now educators, as, I've, as I'm on my quest, my calling, my vocation, to see that students had access to a high quality education, I always found myself troubled in the fact that I was always trying to piecemeal together my instruction. I took a little bit from over here, a little bit from over there. And I always wish that I had one singular set of resources to teach from so I could see that students got to that next level. Well, Tucson Unified School District, I'm truly honored and delighted on behalf of McGraw-Hill to share with you StudySync, our flagship ELA curriculum for six through 12 designed to get your students to that next level. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to establish right out of the get that makes StudySync incredibly distinguishable and honorable. Number one, we built StudySync from the ground up to meet the rigorous demands of the core standards. We didn't take any old existing in-house content, try to piecemeal it together and call it brand new. That's number one. The second thing that also makes StudySync incredibly honorable is that we built it tech first with print to support. Now there's a misconception out there that you have to be one-to-one -one in order to completely and fully implement StudySync, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. And Tucson, I know it's really important for you to have a resource that is equally effective in print as well as online, regardless of your delivery and desired delivery. StudySync will always see that your students have access to a high quality education. Now I know that your task at hand is really great grand and large. And I know that you all had presentations last night. You're certainly with us tonight. You have a couple of presentations tomorrow, right? Now, in every single one of the presentations, I know that they're going to bleed together after a certain amount of time. Everything in an ELA curriculum is certainly going to be universal, or what we like to call at McGraw-Hill the Me Too's. And so if any of these items are important to you and to your rubric, you can go ahead and check those items off right now because we have them just like everybody else does. If the participants tonight, if you're looking for novel studies, do we integrate with Google and any other LMS such as Canvas? We do, All Green and Ed Reports, Plagiarism Checker, Digital and Print. We have all of that. In the short time that I have with you and your attention tonight, I don't wanna focus on why do we look like everybody else that you're considering, because I'm most importantly interested in showing you how StudySync is incredibly different, singular, but also better. I'm gonna hang my hat on those items right now, right up front, really ground this conversation in that student experience. And I know part of your request tonight is discussing student to student interactions and discussions. How we're able to implement that, your requests and your calls in a couple of different ways. I'll start by looking at some of the resources that are on the right-hand side of the screen. With a lot of great dynamic media, that's truly cutting edge, StudySync is really second to none. In regards and in that vein of student-to-student -student interactions, the video towards the bottom of the screen is gonna give you a deeper insight in terms of looking at our student-to-student -student 
peer-to-peer -peer discussions known as Sync TV, where with Study Sync, we are going to be modeling for your students in Tucson Socratic seminars, just to provide an ample opportunity for your students to see themselves in the text and have some great interactions and discussions. That's number one. Another way that we're also able, and really second to none than everybody else in terms of also talking through student to student interactions and discussions are what are known as our blasts. With Study Sync and McGraw-Hill, we are the creators and the originators of these blasts, which are short informational text-based read-write activities that we update every single school day. That's one key advantage of Study Sync is that our platform and our resources never ever get old. Case in point, just looking at this resource that we had for Dia de los Muertos um, upcoming last week. Okay? It's, and you look at the timestamp on it, this is something that we are gonna continue, continue to pour into you and most importantly to your students. Students are going to read the background, take a quick poll questionnaire on the left, which surveys a popular vote, and then finally, students have to respond back to the essential question. In this instance, how can we honor tradition? But they only have 140 characters to be able to capture that response. Where that response is going to ultimately be led to peer-to-peer -peer discussions, anonymous to the student, not anonymous to you all as teachers. Now, continuing in that same vein of talking through those students, it's these beautiful young people that many of you all on the call probably just finished teaching sometime today, okay? These are the young people that we get up early for, stay up late for, in order to see if they get access to high quality education. With McGraw-Hill and with StudySync, we wanna help you move your students on up to that next level. And how we're able to elevate and really move that instruction to that next level with StudySync is number one, by captivating your students with great pieces of literature. And that's what it really starts with, with StudySync. We wanna captivate your students, not only with the canonical text, the contemporary text, but also with culture responsive text so that your students can see themselves in their own education directly in Tucson Unified. Now educators, once we've captivated that student attention, what do we do with it? It's at that moment with StudySync, we're able to give you the resource to elevate that instruction, to ensure that each and every one of your students has access to a high quality education where we can differentiate that content, that instruction, so that each and every one of your students in a much more universal model can have access to a great education, move on over to that next level. And then finally, educators, with the ability to create the classrooms of your dream, you will have that opportunity to add in your own resources and pivot just to create those wonderful learning environments. If I want to do a full-length novel study in my classroom, that's also an option as well. Speaking about novel studies and also just going back to literature, our mantra is that we want to bring literature to life for each and every one of your students moving forward in Tucson Unified. So let's really jumpstart that conversation tonight by moving into the first wave of the discussion in terms of how do we captivate your students. Now, one of the things that I wanted to discuss this evening, going back to some of your criteria, is that you're looking for how do and how does and how will studies think integrate authentic literature that represents diversity. And we're incredibly happy to be able to share that with you tonight. One of the key differentiators of StudySync is our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Where with StudySync, our table of contents in our core ELA instruction will house either 50% authors of color and or 50% female authors. And that's one key differentiator that you only find with StudySync. And how we're able to make that claim is really drawing from the theoretical framework of windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors espoused by Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, where one of our lead authors, Dr. Michelle Martin, which hails from the University of Washington, takes that theoretical framework and puts it into practice in study sync. As Dr. Martin gives your students the opportunity to reflect, that's that mirror, how can your students literally see themselves in the text? That's of paramount importance with study sync. Beyond the scope of that mirror, the shows is really that window in terms of how can I peer into somebody else's culture and find out how we're so much more similar than we are different. And then finally, the offerings are really the, the sliding glass doors as we remove barriers between one group and the next just to show how we're so much more universal as we really are committed 
having great conversations in our classrooms. Now, what's on the screen right now is just a very small sampling of some of the resources that are espoused and tied to our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. By no stretch of the imagination, educators in Tucson, does this encapsulate everything that we have in regards to those great pieces of dynamic pieces of literature, but just a simple gesture towards where are we going with this. Now, you might be thinking on the call this evening, how will my students be able to access all this great content? Well, one of the great things about StudyThink, as I said, is that we built our platform tech first with print to support it. I'll first you start off with tech. Each and every one of your students will easily be rostered into our system at McGraw-Hill so that each and every one of your students has a personable experience with StudyThink to really make it their own, get access to the readings, annotate online. Now, what happens if your students don't always have reliable internet when they leave your classrooms and move on home? Okay? That's where the consumable work texts are also of incredible paramount importance for your students as we're able to provide an equitable learning solution for you and most importantly, your students directly in Tucson. And these consumable work texts will be replenished for the entire lifetime of the adoption. There's equitability between print and online. Now for you all as educators, you will also have access to a hardbound two volume teacher's edition really giving you that tried and true anthology-like feel in your classroom where the student edition is placed front and center with the size teacher wrap margin that once again gives you the play-by-play, in-time, real-time resources to once again move your instruction to that next level. And then finally, educators, no ELA classroom would ever be complete without having a conversation about novels where we can easily assist you all with building on out your favorite classrooms and outfitting them with your favorite full night novels as well. Continue to still speak in that same vein of resources that are going to be interchangeable between the print and the digital. I'm going to leverage one of our lead authors, Dr. Catlin Tucker, whom has written multiple books on the topic of blended learning. Dr. Tucker is really devouting a lot of her best practices as they relate back on over into StudySync, where we wanna provide your students with great opportunities for blended learning, um, as well as remote virtual learning opportunities as well. Once again, regardless of how you're able to implement StudySync, your students will have access to rigorous reading and rigorous writing instruction every single day, but most importantly, equitable learning solutions moving forward. Now, when thinking about how can my students access the content, once again, thinking through how will my students be able to access the content in print or online. For the purpose of tonight's conversation, I'm going to move into, I'm going to move directly on over into um, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. I can access this in print. I can also access this online as well. And I know part of your call for this evening is how will you know, your program study things be used by other content areas in science and social studies, et cetera. This is going to be one of those examples that we can also leverage in social studies as well. All right. So I'm going to once again look at this through the student lens and the student perspective. And as I move directly on over into my platform right now, I'm going to look directly on over into a student experience. So I am logged into one of my students right now, and that's going to be Louis Altusser. I'm just going to literally look at the entire scope of my assignments right now. When you take a look at the assignments in terms of what homework is due for Louis, a large multitude of readings, a large multitude of opportunities that we have to really move instruction on up to that next level. But really what I want to laser in on right now, once again, is looking at MLK's I Have a Dream speech right here. Now, it's not enough for me just to give out MLK's I Have a Dream speech, but I also need to be able to share with your students how does this text work, or right? how does a speech work? You will find embedded and coupled skills lessons that are designed to be taught in conjunction with this main text right over here so that students don't learn skills in the abstract, but most importantly, they're going to learn them in the concrete. As I look at Louis Alchusser, the student's homework, or taking a look at this assignment right over here, right up front, 
Althusser has looked at some vocab taken directly from the text, terms, part of speech, then he has to drag and drop from the top, and you have all the series of resources and moving on down the bottom just to show his understanding of this term right up front. And then he also has to draft a sample sentence right over there to the right. Next, when I move on over into the readings, this is where I'm gonna have access to the readings right up front. Okay? When I take a look at my readings right now, I'm once again looking at this through the lens of that student, Louis Altusser, I will have that opportunity to simply take a look at his annotations as, and I know this is part of your call, giving students the opportunity to practice the mechanics of close reading right up front. And we do that in a very comfortable, natural environment for your students where all of those annotations will automatically say for your students. Now, the other ways we're also able to bring text to life and make it even more approachable, certainly for Louis Altusser and everybody else, is through a series of different tools that are designed to provide that universal access and support. One of the first ways we're able to assign and assist Louis Altusser, the student, is number one, by selecting the numbers button right over here to the right. Now, what might seem incredibly small can oftentimes be incredibly big and significant. When you click the numbers button, you're gonna notice that now we have numbered paragraphs on the left. If I was teaching poetry, I would see either numbered lines and or numbered stanzas. And if anybody on the call is an avid teacher, you'll know that numbering your paragraphs is certainly an avid strategy. We've done that for you in the digital. This is also found in the print book automatically as well. And that's one of the ways we're able to make the text come to life, make it more approachable. The second way that we're also able to make the text more approachable, just moving beyond the scope of the annotations, is taking advantage of the audio. And I know this is once again part of the charge in your call and what you're looking for tonight. With regards to the audio and how this also links on up, let's say with the social studies classroom, is the audio in this instance is going to be a primary source. All right, let's take a very quick listen to how we're unpacking, auditorily speaking, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. All right, educators. Yes, indeed, that is the primary source. That is Martin Luther King actually narrating his own uh, I Have a Dream speech. Now, for some students in your classroom, that might be all that they need to have a deeper appreciation, deeper understanding of the text. We can listen to it respond to some questions, and go ahead and move on over to that next level, move on to the next part of the instruction. However, as you all probably can attest to, no two students learn alike. That might be some, that might be enough for some, might not be enough for others. For other students who need additional support, who want to make the text and the audio as approachable as possible, we'll also take advantage of the highlighter tool right over here to the right. So, for instance, if Louis Altusser needs additional support, he can turn on the highlighter tool right over here, which will momentarily remove the annotation. But watch what happens when I resume the audio. Painful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Okay. In the interest of time, educators, we're going to pause it right there just to kind of give you the idea of we're going to be able to visually track the audio for your students. And that's going to be a great way for your students to be able to continue to follow along with the text in case we need additional supports. The other great thing about the highlighter tool, educators, is that we can also use it to be the vehicle to jump to any specific part of the text which is incredibly helpful when we need to cite some textual evidence, especially when we want to answer and respond to those higher order thinking questions that always encourage us to move back on over into the text and cite with some degrees of specificity. The final way that we're also able to make the text come to life and make it even more approachable for our students is in the lens of the slow audio button right over here in the bottom right hand corner of the page. Educators, the slow audio button is going to slow down the narrator in this instance, Martin Luther King, by 20 to 25 percent, yet still maintain that same high quality resolution for each and every one of your students so that the text, most importantly the audio, 
will still be equally as approachable as we want to ensure that each and every one of your students can simply access the text. Now, beyond the scope of my ability to read, comment on it, you know, with the annotations and the audio, I next want to move on over into the quiz questions. Now, one great thing about the quiz questions is that all of these are going to be multiple choice questions, and they're also going to be auto graded as well. I know self reflection and self assessment, I believe, is one of your uh, criteria that you're looking for tonight in Tucson. This is how we're able to answer and address that. For your students, when they submit their quizzes, and rather than when they submit the whole entire assignment, your students, such as Lily Altusser, can get immediate feedback to see how closely they're doing in terms of getting access to the readings. As case in point, Lily Altusser has answered this question correctly right up front, moving on to the second question, um, got it incorrect, et cetera, et cetera. But he does have that right there at his fingertips. Now, after we've done the reading, taken some quiz questions, just to gain a little bit of deeper understanding of comprehension, We'll next move directly on over into Sync TV. Once again, those true hallmarks of Study Sync that we want to give you since the opportunity to model Socratic seminars in your classrooms, but most important, to have that student to student, peer to peer discussions. So I'm going to take a couple of moments right now to jumpstart that conversation right now to show you how we're going to model those discussions in your classrooms in Tucson. Let's take a look at how we're unpacking MLK's I Have a Dream speech right now. Wow. Yeah, like the end when MLK is repeating free at last, free at last, it almost sounds kind of like a song. Yeah, the whole speech does sound kind of like musical, right? Is that a rhetorical device? Like musical? I don't think so. Well, there are other rhetorical devices that we can pick out, right? Yeah, definitely. So should we look at the prompt? Here, yeah, I got it. The I Have a Dream speech is one of the most famous and off-quoted in history. What is the power of Dr. Keene's rhetoric? How does he use rhetorical devices to support his message? Okay, so rhetoric. How do we define that again? <laughs> rhetoric is like the art of making a really persuasive speech. Oh, you think it's an art? I mean... All right, educators. In the interest of time, I'll go ahead and pause it right there. But a couple of things I want to point out to you as what we're doing with our Sync TV movie episode is that we want to give your students not only a prompt, an intellectual North Star, so to speak, for what they should be uncovering and unpacking, but most importantly, giving them the opportunity to look back into the text in order to be able to cite some textual evidence, but also be empowered to share what's important to them, as what everybody brings to the table is of equal importance, and they're able to converse and share their ideas, and most importantly, a respectful, kind, and ultimately a productive manner, right? Now, when we move past Think TV, I'll next move on over to my ability to move on into uh, my response right over here, which is where I'm going to go to be able to answer my think questions, which Louis Althusser has automatically done. All right. Now, one of the things that's also incredibly helpful when Louis Althusser is able to answer his questions is when I move into my quiz or even my response, I do have the ability to move back on over into the text, and it's called the uh, textual evidence button really okay and so we can move directly on back on over into the text Beck, i'm just answering your question right now that is a key component of the text of our ability to move back on over into the text in order to be able to cite some textual evidence in this response as well as taking a look at our quiz questions as well okay now the final thing we can also take advantage of when it's our opportunity for us to be able to answer these questions online is I can respond to the questions directly in the window or the platform right over here, but I can also have that opportunity to be able to cite some textual evidence via Google and Google Docs. Okay? So here's just an example of it. If the student, when Louis Altusser logs in, he'll be able to select the button that says Create Google Docs. That split screen mode is what I was just sharing with you, and we'll take a look at that in another couple of minutes as well. But when you select Create the Google Docs, It'll give you that opportunity to take that prompt, move it on over into a brand new Google Doc where students will have that opportunity to simply be able to 
finish on up the assignment that way, okay? Now, the other thing that I also wanna comment on in terms of how we're able to captivate your students is once again, giving them the platform, study sync, that also mirrors the world with which they exist and they interact with. One of the ways we're able to give them a platform that mirrors their own existence is through the downloadable mobile app in which your students can download not only MLK's I Have a Dream speech, but everything else, all the reading, all the writing to the conveniences of a smartphone or even a Chromebook. They can have access to all of their assignments without an internet connection. And as soon as they link back up with that internet connection, after they've done the work on, offline, all of that work will be deposited into your account where it's ready to be graded. Other ways that we can also provide access for your students is certainly in the lens of our single sign-on partners, where I know in Tucson, you all use Canvas. And we have a full integration with Canvas, as well as uh, also can offer great passback as well, just to make that a much more seamless integration between both platforms as well. So as we round out the first wave of the conversation in terms of captivating your students, once again, we wanna provide a platform for your students to A, not only see themselves in the text, with great pieces of literature that cover the contemporary and the canon, but also giving them a dynamic resource that also will aid and assist with your students moving on over to the next level and having access to high quality education. Now, once again, after we've captivated your students, what do we do with that instruction? Now it's time for us to move that instruction on over to that next level and let's elevate and take things on over to that next level. Now, as an educator this evening in Tucson, you do and will have that opportunity to really pick your path, so to speak. As there's a multitude of ways that you can implement study sync and really make it your classroom, your choice. Right up front, you have your thematic units, or you can move on over into your novel studies. We're educators. You will have that opportunity to read some of your favorite full-length manuscripts with great supports as you read those re great readings cover to cover. For my high school folks, in case that you want to have a full survey of the traditional American or British lit survey courses from a historical standpoint, those are also available. And then finally, you do have the opportunity to create your own customized units in a word you can resequence this any way, shape, or form that you like. Now, I'm going to go back into the four ELA tab, those thematic units. And I'm really gonna dive into those thematic units right now as this aligns with one of your questions or rather one of your charges this evening in terms of you're looking at a series of resources and how do the technological components of, let's say study sync, um, differentiate and engage your students, uh, especially with that ability to look at close reading strategies. With our instructional model, really building upon the best practices of Dr. Doug Fisher, whose close reading rigorous reading routines are placed front and center of our core ELA instruction, our thematic units. Now, Fisher is incredibly crisp in his expectation of what students need to be doing every single time they're greeted with a piece of text. Fisher's first recommendation is students need to see the text for what it is. These are his words. And we model that in that first read right over here, where students are reading for exposure and for comprehension. They don't have to get everything right up front. But your second recommendation is that students now need to read to find meaning or significance, or rather they need to find, they need to read to be able to find out how text work or its mechanics. Okay? And how we do that is through the skill lesson. As once again, no skill in our core ELA tab is ever taught in isolation, as we use the previous reading to be the vehicle to teach and cement that skill. Fisher's final recommendation is that students now need to reread the text to find that meaning, to find that significance, and that's how we're able to establish that close reading routine. Okay? After we've imparted that three-part cycle that's going to set up future collaborative conversations, just like we saw with Sync TV, and that also will lead us to the writing where everything that is submitted through StudySync is available for anonymous peer review. It's that entire close reading routine, that cycle is placed at the forefront that really gives your students a great advantage in terms of unpacking those close reading strategies. Beyond the scope of that close reading instruction, we next want to expose your students to additional readings so they can leverage this skill in a multitude of different varieties with these independent reads, once again, setting up those collaborative peer-to-peer -peer conversations, most importantly, finishing on up with writing and additional opportunities for peer review. 
Now, other ways we can also provide you as instructor with different ways to elevate that instruction is also giving you opportunities to change the room, so to speak, in which you can implement all of our instruction in either whole group, small group, or even individual instruction. And we make those recommendations throughout the entire scope of our lesson plans. Now, your teacher's edition is certainly chock full of great tips and strategies to elevate that instruction, move on over to that next level. As you can see on the screen what I have with MLK's I Have a Dream. But that's not the only place that we have we're able to elevate your instruction. And that's where the online resource and the platform really come in handy. So I'm going to move directly back on over into my online platform right now, where I'm going to stop looking at the student platform and move directly back on over into my teacher platform. I'm sure the purposes of tonight's conversation, I'll move into ninth grade. Now, one great advantage of StudySync is in our core ELA tab, and this is where we cover all of our standards, you will have access to everything 6 through 12, a complete secondary vertical articulation. And you can also see access to American and Brit Lit right over there to the right. Another great thing about that is that when I move directly on over into my thematic unit, and as I said, I'm looking at high school, as a high school instructor, I have options in terms of do I want to teach from the thematic unit option or do I want to teach from my novel study options where I can choose one of three just to be just to ensure that I have full standards coverage. Regardless if I go the thematic unit route or the novel study route, I will cover the exact same skills and standards. Now, one other advantage of StudySync is that all of the testable standards are housed and covered within your first four thematic units. So therefore, all of your testable standards will be housed within that window. So when your students take those high stakes examinations, you'll be in full compliance. And students will have access to all those resources. Each and every one of your thematic units or even your novel studies is going to last you 30 instructional days. So therefore, you have your entire year's worth of content right over here where all of your writing, all of your reading, and grammar is automatically embedded throughout the entire scope of your instruction. And we also have further resources to help flush on out additional grammar resources down here with your grammar language composition guidebook. I'm going to move directly on over into my very first thematic unit right now. And the first thing that I will be greeted with is the intro movie trailer, which is designed to set the scene, the context, and the tone for what are we covering over the next 30 instructional days. Let me show you how we're able to jumpstart some of those great conversations and really dial into those great pieces of literature right now as we unpack ninth grade unit one, Divided We Fall. Why does it often hurt to feel excluded from the group? What's wrong with being an outsider? The Florida Everglades, a full moon, the swamp buzzes with yellow flies and mosquitoes. On all fours, girls bend back cattails as they scamper through the swamp. What happens when your family stands between you and the outside world? Dojos and black belts, breaking boards with balled up fists. Jabeen claims it's how she lives her life. But when the lies she tells to fit in catch up with her, will she still have any friends? Tryouts for the high school drill team. Girls wait in line with numbers pinned to their chest. Sequin costumes, the smell of hairspray. For the new girl in a new school, she can only cross her fingers and hope they pick her. Is there value in the outsider's perspective? What risks do outsiders take? Why do we feel the need to belong? All right, educators, I'm going to pause it right here because that question that's right there in front of you on the screen, why do we feel the need to belong? That is going to be our essential question. So everything that we read over the next 30 instructional days is designed to answer and address that question. Now, when I take a look at, and right below my video, I do have my pacing guide that gives me the day-to-day, -day, the play-by-play -play of what do I teach, how do I teach, and when do I teach it, okay? 
Now, when I move directly on over into the integrated reading and writing right over here on the left-hand side of the screen, this is really going to be my table of contents. In terms of, it's going to give you access to all the readings that we're going to cover within those 30 instructional days. For educators, this is where StudySync truly shines, as this is where you're going to find those great readings that we're going to house either 50% authors of color and or 50% female authors, okay? Really blending the contemporary with the canon, all right? So when I go throughout the entire scope of the readings right over here, you're able to see these blue boxes. And the great thing about the blue box is that we want to pair some readings together for your students. And this instance, looking at Welcome to America, a poem by a young contemporary poet, Sarah Abu Rashid, Welcome to America, as she's discussing what it feels like to be a newly minted immigrant from Syria. And what does it feel to, and what does it mean and feel to be an American at this juncture in her life? Okay. Now we're gonna couple what does it mean to be an American with MLK's I Have a Dream speech in order to give students that opportunity, just to simply make those connections in terms of what does it mean to really be an American citizen, all right? Now, when I take a look at my first read right now, once again, and I'm gonna go back into the text right now to answer um, a couple of people's questions. My ability to split screen mode here with my think questions as well as the quiz, as it goes back to the earlier question, gives me that opportunity to move back directly on over into the text where I'll see access to the questions on the right in addition to the readings on the left. And if I've made any annotations there, those will automatically show up for me as a student. Okay? Now, other things I'll also share with you in terms of how can we make the text much more approachable. Number one, the intro movie trailer designed to give students an individual experience in terms of how can I make MLK's uh, speech come to life, but also what's known as the scaffolds. And I know that this is also very important for you all in terms of how do we make the text much more universal in application. So right up front, I, this is just purely for preview purposes, as I can set up these scaffolds to and for individual students. And the system will automatically remember and will call those recommendations and assign it based on whatever I've assigned out to the student. So let's just say I have a student in my classroom who's a beginning level English language learner. Okay. New button on there says scaffolds. And let's just say that my student in my classroom has an international background in which English isn't their first language. Okay. How can I make this text much more approachable? I'll take Spanish right over here. Okay. When I open up my scaffold right over here on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to note that you will have additional resources that are designed to accompany your readings, such as looking at MLK's I Have a Dream speech right over here, just to make the text much more approachable and universal in nature. We have that as intro level. I'll move on over into the readings right over here, in which when we take a look at the vocab, notice the terms are available, both English and in this instance, Spanish, and also a visual representation for that student, just so it's a little bit more approachable. Okay? Now, when I move directly on over to the right, moving past how we make those connections between text to text, text to self, text to world, I'll move on down and see my language level summaries. And so you'll see these language level summaries, and this will be enigmatic of each and every one of the languages that's available for you as you choose from the drop down menu in StudySync. But there's also audio supports that go along with it before students move directly on over into the text down below. Martin Luther King Jr. En un discurso ante 250 mil personas reunidas para la marcha en Washington, afirma que han venido a Washington para que se salde una deuda. Otorgar... So that's access support right over there. For once again, move directly direct on over into the text right down below, right? Educators, in the interest of time, I'm going to bypass the quiz and move directly on over into my think questions, where as a student, we can certainly take advantage of that sped screen mode to go back and find some textual evidence, but also taking advantage of our pre-built scaffolds. We're right over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you have access to your sentence frame starters with a word bank down at the very bottom of the screen, where students can draw from the word bank move to the top, fill in the blank right over here, and then copy that response and move it directly on over so that each and every one of your students 
doesn't have to create a response from scratch, but also feel supported in your classrooms right in Tucson so they can get access to those next great levels of discussions, okay? Now, when I move directly on over and back on over into the text, okay? So I'll move on out of my scaffold. I'll move back on over to the reading just for a very split second, as I know that you all were interested in knowing what does this look like when it's actually gonna be printed. I can go into the reading, go to my current tab assignment, and this is a very quick print preview. It can show you what this is going to look like if I choose to work with this in an offline manner, okay? Now, other things that I do wanna share with you in terms of going back to the original part of the conversation, and that's going back to that universal access of how do I implement this, let's take a look at our lesson plans right over here. Now, these lesson plans are chock full of great opportunities just to move that instruction, all right? So we have our objectives, our standards, there's opportunity to differentiate. So how do we move this from whole group, small group, or individual instruction? And then moving on down the line to how do we unpack complex text, entry points, and also looking at further opportunities for differentiation. Here, what I like to call the window pane. Everything on the left-hand side of the screen is on grade level content, as how do we introduce the text, how do we develop background knowledge and cultural awareness? As I know, that's was part of your charge and what you're looking for this evening, as well as taking a look at revisiting academic uh, vocabulary, I mean, content vocabulary as well. All that is on grade level, right? Now, just to the right of that is where those opportunities for differentiation and where those scaffolded supports come in handy, as now we have those opportunities to really reach our students of English language learners, whom are English language learners, as well as taking a look at some resources for our gifted and talented population, as those students are also part of the dialogue of universal access, as we want to ensure that each and every one of your students has access to a high quality education moving forward. Okay? I'll quickly back away from that resource right now, and then once again, just take a look at our skills lessons. In this instance, I'll take a look at uh, rhetoric. Okay? Now, with regards to rhetoric as that skill, we're gonna always adopt the gradual release model of responsibility, the I do, the we do, finally the you do. And it's these resources that are really at the forefront, the heart, the soul, the center of study sync. As you provide a definition outlining what is rhetoric and certainly leveraging um, Aristotle's logical appeals right up front, pathos, logos, and ethos. Then we'll move on over into the vocabulary right over here where we want to give your students the opportunity to literally work with some of these literary devices before we move directly on over into the model, where the model here directly aligns with the reading and the scale. We put those side by side. And that's one of those great things about study signage that is really um, truly dynamic and really, really powerful. Okay? Number one, we have our checklist for rhetoric right up front. As we take a look at those logical appeals right over here, and then most importantly, when we move on down the line, when we get down to the skills model, you'll see how and where we align the skill rhetoric directly with the reading right over here. So we're very, very crisp and clear in terms of where are we taking the conversation for your students. We'll finally finish on uh, by moving on over into the your turn where we want your students to be able to cite the text with a lot of specificity as you move back into a very short excerpt of King's speech so that your students are able to answer and address these questions with a lot of, of specificity and being able to cite with a lot of textual evidence, okay? I'm gonna move back on over into my slide deck right now, but that's just one of the ways we're able to really sort of elevate that instruction with your students in terms of providing you with those scaffolds to give each and every one of your students what they need and when they need it, just to be able to access the content. The last thing that I wanna comment on this evening is our ability with SteadySync to be able to create the classrooms of your dreams. And one of the ways we're able to really create the classrooms of your dreams right up front is talking through novels and novel studies. Simply put, with SteadySync, we support you in terms of reading your favorite full-length manuscripts. Now, it's not enough for me just to give you a full-length manuscript but one thing with study seeing is that we are always going to be making comparisons and connecting and providing you with those connecting texts right at point of use.
so that it's much easier for your students to be able to draw those parallels, really tap into the human condition. Now, beyond also just making those connections, there's also going to be writing prompts that go along with it just to help further cement those connections between that anchor text and those supplemental readings so that students can really see those connections in real time. Now, also still speaking about writing, as writing is such an integral component to study sync, is that in each and every one of our thematic units, we'll always have an extended writing project. Each and every one of the writing projects is going to cover a different genre of writing, whether it's expository, narrative, literary analysis, just to name a few. Now, everybody talks about writing, and that doesn't make us special, all right? What does make StudySync special is how we teach writing, is that with StudySync, we teach process writing. So educators, long gone are the days in which you give out the standard five-paragraph essay. You give your students two, three weeks to do it. They start the night beforehand. Okay. With study sync, we're going to work through the entire writing process incrementally, spending a day or two on the planning, spending another couple of days on the drafting. So looking at you know, writing thesis statements, for instance, looking at relevant evidence, taking a look at the revision process after the next couple of days, how to refine those introductions, those transitions, conclusions, and then finally finishing on up with the proofreading and publishing processes so that we have a full, complete writing project that's able to be graded, okay? Also, once again, grammar is also gonna be embedded into that writing project in case that's important for you all as well, okay? Now, once your students submit work in study sync, there's a great sort of feedback loop that comes around, okay? Number one, the first thing that I'll offer to you with study sync is that everything that is submitted through study sync is available for anonymous peer review. It'll be anonymous to the student, not anonymous to you all as teachers or instructors. And as the instructor, if you want to turn this off, you're in the driver's seat in terms of turning it on and turning it off. And so your students are really writing to an authentic audience, somebody that they're seated next to, just so we want to be able to improve that student writing. Okay? Now, once it's submitted, for you all as instructors, it's going to be filtered through our built-in plagiarism checker. You can see right over there on the left. And that's going to filter through every single composition ever submitted in Tucson via StudySync for the entire lifetime of your adoption. And then finally, for you all as instructors, you will have that opportunity to provide that teacher feedback with the opportunity to annotate and comment directly on that student page right over here. Okay? You can add your comments right down below. Or finally, to save time, educators, you can record yourself making a video. You can certainly shut your camera off if you like, but giving your feedback auditorily speaking so students still have that same feedback, but they're able to take advantage of it just in a different light. Right? Now, as students are submitting work through StudySync, I want you to note this. There are three tangible benefits for submitting work through StudySync. One, everything is available for that peer review. Two, everything will be filtered through our built-in plagiarism checker. But three, everything submitted through StudySync will be housed in the student binder. And that binder is going to be a digital portfolio that's going to transfer with that student year to year for the entire lifetime of your adoption. So imagine being a sixth grade student going all the way through their secondary education. And ultimately, when they get to 12th grade, that 12th grade teacher can look back on that student's portfolio for the entire lifetime that they've actually been in secondary. So you can really get a lot of great feedback. Okay? Now, other ways that we're also able to provide great feedback for your students in terms of talking through writing, and also I know student self-reflection was really important for you all tonight, I want to make a very quick gesture towards our built-in uh, writing program called Write Precise. Right? To unpack what Write Precise does, it's our um, online essay grader that's really designed to give your students additional support with providing feedback and rewriting. Okay? So here I logged in as one of my students. We're responding to Bio Boy. So here's my uh, prompt right over here. Here's my response down below. And when I submitted the assignment through Write Precise, this is the feedback that I got as a student instantaneously. Number one, my response you know, didn't, didn't um, explain clearly enough. I didn't use enough textual evidence. 
My response is too brief, too many errors. So this is a way for your students to be able to reflect on their own writing, and they can go ahead and clean this on up before they once again submit it back to you all as instructors. So this is a great way for your students to, once again, take advantage or take stock of their own writing, their own education, their own process, okay? Now also, in the ability to create our classrooms and create a much more welcoming learning environment, I certainly want to include our more global international students Right in, your, right in your own community in Tucson. In each and every one of our thematic units in StudySync, there's resources specifically earmarked for English language learners, where a couple of readings can also be subbed on out for your students with a much more approaching grade level readability. Lexile level will be a little bit more approachable, but students are still in the same thematic unit and are still answering the exact same questions as well there's gonna be a series of different skills right up front to help assist your students with language acquisition before they're finally going to be punctuated with the extended oral project, which is gonna serve as the counter to your student's extended writing project as well. Educators, the other ways that we're able to really sort of bring the text uh, to life, we're gonna sort of create the classrooms of your dreams is certainly looking at and looking through our library. Educators in Tucson, our library in studying is truly second to none as we're always constantly adding to our library with at least 10 new titles to our library every single month. That is an exclusive resource that you can only find with studying is our ongoing commitment to getting access to great resources for you and most importantly for your students. Now the number that I have right over here 1946 that represents every single resource that I have in the program. When I click the filter button right over here, you're able to see how we're able to truncate that 1946 number. So on the left-hand side of the screen, if I'm looking for more culture responsive text, I can do that right over there. And you'll see in the parentheses how many resources we have that are gonna be tied and associated with that number. So I wanna move on over to the right, looking at something for a very specific grade level. I'm looking for very specific resources on these special features, such as full-length manuscripts. I can find that right over there, even Spanish text as well. And then finally, moving on over to the right in terms of how we're able to unpack a resource in terms of the genre. So I can look at literature. I can also look at informational text as well. Okay? The other ways we're also able to firmly take a look at some of our additional resources is in the lens of those blasts. Once again, these contemporary conversations that we're always going to constantly update every single school day so that we have literally future proof our ELA curriculum for you and most importantly for your students. Okay. Now, other things I can also do to kind of once again fill on out and continue in that same vein of looking at great contemporary resources that are going to be constantly added to StudySync is with our partnership, or rather our acquisition of Achieve 3000. We want to give you the opportunity to expand that library in so many different various fashions and forms. Okay? So with Achieve 3000, if I want to look up nothing more culture responsive text or even find full length novels online as well, I do have that as a resource and the ability to be able to carry that on through throughout the entire lifetime of our adoption as well. Okay? Now, as I bring everything to a full and complete close, so they want to comment on assessments. If I go the novel study route, which I can easily do, I can move in that manner in that fashion. Okay? Or if I want to move directly on over into my thematic unit, that's also of paramount importance. Either way, I'll still assess my students on the exact same skills and standards. So right up front, at the very beginning of the year, we have our diagnostic screener to outline the baseline skills for your students. And then we work through the six component six part component of our assessment cycle that includes the benchmarks formative assessments review end of unit assessments as well as test prep test prep and practice when you open up your assessment suite you have a multitude of varieties of assessment you can certainly take advantage of diagnostics benchmarks uh change up by question type content as well or if i want to take a look at very specific passages i can do that right over there okay then finally, after I've taken my students, if I just have taken this exam, what do I do with the data, okay? 
data educators without action is oftentimes incredibly useless. Okay? So what do we do with that data? I can look at this real big picture in terms of my opportunity to simply take a look at you know, standards at a macro level. I can also do this on an individual micro level where with study sync, and this is incredibly important, we're able to laser in on individual students as they collide with individual standards. So as you join me on the screen, I'm really going to be concerned with looking at Klaus right over here. Okay? Since Klaus is giving me zeros all across the board, what can I do for Klaus? Maybe you have a student or two in your classroom who might have a very sort of similar experience. Okay? With the data that Klaus is giving me, I can always go ahead and click on that 0% for that student right over here for RL 6.3 for Klaus and bring this up. And now I have opportunities to reteach these skills for Klaus. Okay? So case in point, what it's going to do is going to direct me to go back into my library. So I'll move back on over into my library right now. So with that skill or that standard in mind, I'll move back on over into my library and go into skills, go into filter. And I can move directly on over into my spotlight skills right over here in order to have those reteaching opportunities to be able to reteach that skill for that student. That's one way that we can go. Okay? Other ways we can also unpack reteaching opportunities is if I find that standard that that student needs additional supports on, find that skill. You can drop it into the standard text box right over here where you can find that skill, open it up, and this is where you're going to have those additional reteaching opportunities for your students. So it just gives me great explicit instruction based on the data that students are providing for us so that we can reteach that student and once again move things on up to that next level. Okay? And then finally, I can move on down to application and there's 156 different opportunities for Klaus to practice and demonstrate his understanding of the skill moving forward. So I, with a lot of confidence and clarity, I'm able to reteach that student. Klaus, for instance, to give him exactly what he needs and when he needs it, right? Um, I want to make a very quick pivot while I'm here in the library to also comment on novel studies as well. It's going to add your attention for another couple of moments, okay? When I move directly on over into my units of study, I can move on down to novel studies right over here. And let's say I'll move on over into, let's say, grade nine. And there are 33 novel study options that we have just for ninth grade alone, okay? Let's go down the line. Let's just say that I wanted to teach um, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird in its entirety. You can open that up right over there. Move on down the line. You can see how we're able to unpack the readings, but as well as have those opportunities to have those connecting texts that are going to run adjacent to our anchor text uh, right up front. Okay. All right. Now, so I want to finish on uh, the entire sort of slide deck right over here as it goes back to those opportunities for reteaching. You can also automate all of this right over there for your students. And so when students fall below a certain threshold, we will give you, and most importantly, your students, that opportunity to be able to automatically see those spotlight skills that are going to be revisited. Okay? Now, educators in Tucson, a series of resources is only as successful as its implementation. And with our implementations, with McGraw-Hill and Study Sync, it's something that we take incredibly seriously, as we want to be able to support you from the first day all the way through the last day of your adoption, right? And we can create a customized PD plan just to see that reigns true, okay? Um, Carrie, would you mind taking a couple of moments to unpack what can PD potentially look like for our educators here in Tucson tonight? Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. So one of the biggest advantages of working with McGraw-Hill is our commitment to you. When you select McGraw-Hill resources, we want you to be able to use all of these things. And I know we've covered a lot in the last hour, um, but please to kind of calm any anxiety there, we will be with you every step of the way. We'll work with your team to create a custom implementation plan um, and we will we will definitely customize that um, based on your needs as far as in-person and virtual, as well as our outstanding asynchronous training. Um, so 
Thank you very much, Kevin, for going through all of that. Thanks, everyone, for the great interaction in the chat. And um, before I open it up for Q&A, I just want to make a couple of quick comments here. Um, we are so honored to have this opportunity to earn your partnership for ELA, and we are just thrilled to be here with you this evening. If there are any questions that we can support with, we're happy to do that. And lastly, I wanna make sure that I express my gratitude for all of you on this committee. We have the utmost respect for your district and your process and the Tucson community. And we really appreciate your investment in this process to make the right selection on behalf of your students.